Good morning and welcome to the service of morning prayer for March the 30th. It's good to be with you this morning. I'm recording at Barnell Ridge Farm here in Tiny and uh, this is a service for Trinity. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Rejoice and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. Our psalm for this morning is Psalm 101. I will sing of loyalty and justice. To you, O Lord, I will sing. I will study the way that is blameless. When shall I attain it? I will walk with integrity of heart within my house. I will not set before my eyes anything that is base. I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. Perverseness of heart shall be far from me. I will know nothing of evil. One who secretly slanders a neighbor I will destroy. A haughty look or an arrogant heart I will not tolerate. I will look with favor on the faithful of the land so that they may live with me. Whoever walks in, a, in the way that is blameless shall minister to me. No one who practices deceit shall remain in my house. No one who utters lies shall continue in my presence. Morning by morning I will destroy all the wicked in the land, cutting off all the evildoers from the city of the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading for this morning is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and reading from verse 1 to 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray by idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaks by the Spirit of God. We have a cat. <laughs> Ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is, is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given the, spir given the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit and another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these activities by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Gospel reading for this morning is taken from Mark chapter 8, a reading from verse 11 to 26. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Pharisees came and began to argue with Jesus, asking him for a sign from heaven to test him. And he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, Why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly I tell you, no sign will give, be given to this generation. And he left them, and getting into a boat again, he went across to the other side. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And, be and becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about not having bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the five thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the four thousand, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, Seven. Then he said to them, Do you not yet understand? They came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had put saliva on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, can you see anything? And the man looked up and said, I can see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on his eyes again, and he looked intently, and his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. Then he sent him away to his home, saying, Do not even go into the village. 
the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 101 was composed for the inauguration of a king and asserts one key concept. Character is the foundation of leadership. Or to phrase it differently, simply enforcing the law concerning right or wrong is not adequate when we're in leadership. The psalm opens with the twins' concepts of loyalty, chesed, and justice. Loyalty here has the same Hebrew root as unfailing love or compassion, chasid, and suggests that the loyalty of the king and the people is rooted in the mutual understanding of an unfailing love. It is twinned with justice and suggests to us that such loyalty is made real or tangible in seeking justice for those who are wronged and the restoration of the right relationship between, peop between people. The Hebrew concept of justice is not about punishing for doing wrong, but about restoration to what is right and good, what we call restorative justice today. Importantly, such a role by the king is rooted in the king's divine calling to live out the character of God and to be empowered by God for such a task. Hence the reference to, when will I attain it, or when will you come to me, in reference to God. The rest of the psalm is how the king intends to live out in being blameless, and to support those in his realm who do and to oppose those who do not. The central idea of moral character that defines the king is blameless, tamim, and integrity, tom. These same terms are used in Psalm 18 and Psalm 78 to describe the king's righteousness and carry the idea of wholeness, completeness and finished. They speak of a consistency between the values ascribed to loyalty and justice and how those are lived out in a way that demonstrates wholeness, completeness and that brings things to completion in contrast to hypocrisy. They speak of a deep commitment and dependency on God to make them real and tangible in the life of the one who seeks loyalty and justice. Integrity of heart is contrasted in the psalm with perverseness of heart. Perverseness means that conduct that is twisted, inconsistent and lacking in coherence with that inner commitment. The litany of the wrongs are characterized by, by perverseness of heart include evil, wicked, base, falling away, secret slander, haughty arrogance, deceit and lies, all things we loathe to see in somebody in leadership that promises us loyalty and justice. The list of wrongs is more than a list, it's a significant failure of character. The beauty of the psalm is not in the list of things that the king gets right or fails to get wrong, but rather in the aspiration to be more than the list of do's and don'ts. That beauty is found in the aspiration of the king to have this deep sense of integrity, to seek loyalty and justice, lived out for the benefit of not only those in the king's own household, but for those in the whole land. That all and sundry would benefit from this moral fortitude and character. The psalm sets itself in contrast to the leadership of the Pharisees and Herod in today's Gospel reading the yeast of hypocrisy that feeds off the poor in contrast to the justice and loyalty of God to be found in the feeding of the poor with generous excess. It sets itself in contrast to the political leadership of our day that promises the world during elections and delivers nothing but broken promises until the next election. It calls us to higher levels of leadership in the life of the church that go way beyond rule keeping and call us to character that speaks of deep loyalty faithful compassion for those who we serve and those amongst whom we minister and justice for those for whom we advocate. The psalm calls us to be in Christ in our leadership and in our faithfulness and commitment to do the actions of Christ in our world. Amen. We affirm our faith together in Hear O Israel. Hear O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. We continue to use Litany 14, our Litany for Lent, as we journey through the season of Lent together. With confidence and trust, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. 
We pray for one holy Catholic and apostolic church throughout the world. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for those preparing for baptism and for their teachers and sponsors, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who in leadership in the life of the church, that we may be loyal to those we are called to serve, and that we may seek justice in all that we do. We pray for Bishop Andrew, our diocesan, and Priscilla, our area bishop. We pray for the, the clergy, the lay leaders, and those in authority in the life of our ministry that share together as Trinity St. Margaret's and Good Shepherd. We pray for peace in the world, that a spirit of respect and reconciliation may grow among nations and peoples. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who are in political leadership in our local community, within our province and within our nation that we may constantly seek justice and be loyal to those whom we are called to serve. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We give thanks for the leadership of those who have uh, led Ukraine through this really horrific circumstance. We pray for those in leadership in Russia, that they may seek justice, compassion, mercy and grace. We pray for the poor, the persecuted, the sick and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners and all in danger, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. We pray for those who have requested prayers from us, those on our parish prayer list. And this morning we pray particularly for Stephanie, who will be going through surgery on Thursday. We pray for the refugees in our community, those who are fleeing places of conflict and war. We pray for prisoners and those in prison. We pray for those who minister to them. We pray for all whom we have offended. We pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. And for grace to amend our lives and to further the reign of God, we pray to you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son Jesus Christ came from heaven to, the, to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread, that we may live in, He may live in us and we in Him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just a reminder that we have a series of Lenten courses that are ongoing at the moment including a study of John's Gospel um, hosted at St. Margaret's and online and then also our conversations around theology in the city. And this coming Friday, um, we have a gentleman from the city of Barrie who will be coming to speak to us on environmental issues. And then we have a prayer service uh, this evening on Wednesday the 30th um, for the Ukraine. Um, it will be at St. Margaret's Barrie and is hosted by St. Margaret's and West Side Lutheran. It starts at 7 p.m. and uh, will be live streamed um, on the St. Margaret's website. May the God of hope fill us with joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>